It is the Wise Bubbler here, and today I'm going to show you how to create 10x better search directly within Bubble using the Bubble API connector and Elasticsearch. So on the left here, we can see the search results from Bubble's native search, and on the right here, we can see the search results from Elasticsearch. So unless I type the exact word, I don't get any search results from Bubble's native search. So you can see it's much more case sensitive and you'll see there are much more tools you can use in Elasticsearch to make your queries a lot better and more relevant to users. Let's jump in to Elasticsearch, but before I do, I wanna explain that Elasticsearch works based on documents. And they look like this. And so documents is a table. Think about it like an Excel table where it's a table off of bubble where you're gonna be storing actual things. You think of a document as a row with columns and the column is description, user contributed, title, added field, and then a value. So it's a key value. So there's the columns and then there's the values in the columns. But the only difference is it's stored in a very lightweight fashion in JSON and there is no relationships. So what's good about storing your search results off of Bubble is that you can combine both different data types in Bubble into one document. So you can add here a field from another table and you can create a search index, which is essentially a set of documents that will be queried in your app. And that is how Elasticsearch works. And then it queries those documents in an efficient way. So let's go into how to set up an account and then connect it to Bubble. This should take under three minutes. So first you go on elastic.co and click try free. Keep in mind that this may cost a about $95 a month if you actually want this to work. So this is really for apps that you are fully invested in. So you can sign up here and fill out all the info. And now you want to choose your deployment and you wanna edit the settings here to essentially be in your region. I just use Google Cloud, but if you're in a different region, you wanna make sure that you're choosing the one as close to you as possible. I don't know what these settings mean. <laughs> And this is actually what you're paying for is the resources that Elastic is using. It's hosting it on the cloud and it's running a search engine for you on the cloud, which is actually really cool. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna skip this and go here on the left and then click on app search. And on app search, you're gonna create an engine and you're gonna click app search, Elastic search index based app search manage docs. And then you're gonna click continue and you're just gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it bubble for YouTube. Cool. And then we're gonna create search engine. Awesome. And then over here, it's just gonna give you, if you click index from API, it'll actually give you the API endpoint. You need to plug into bubble to actually access search engine. And this index from API is what you're gonna use to add documents to Elasticsearch. So essentially what you're gonna to need to do is take everything in your database, in your bubble database, and organize it in a way that you want it to be searchable. So again, you can pull from any one of your tables in bubble and put it on Elasticsearch. It's like an external table that is just built for search. And you're gonna send it via API all the documents you wanna query. And every time something is added, you can add it to the index. Think of index as table the synonymous word. All right, so what you can do is just click index from API and then copy, and that's a CURL that you can paste into the Bubble API connector. So let's go into a Bubble app and see how to connect it. All right, so now we're in a Bubble app and we're gonna add another API. And then down here, we're just gonna expand and delete this. And here we're gonna import another call from CURL and we're gonna paste exactly what we had there. And once we paste it, this is what you're gonna use to create documents. Document, remember, is just a row. Think about a row in a table or a record. It's synonymous. And then it will put in all the details you need here. But the one thing you want to do is delete the entire body and put in the body that you want to set. So instead of putting in the body that they chose for you, just put in key value pairs that you want in your document. So for example, if you're saving a user and you want to search the user, probably name, and then in JSON format, put, maybe I'll put Josh, and then you may wanna put profession, and in JSON format, add profession. Profession, let's put, I don't know, lawyer, okay? 
and that is all in JSON proper format. And then what you need to do is actually get a private key that works for this app engine. So let's go back here and go to the left side and then click on credentials. And very simply, you can copy the private key. This is for read write, meaning for creating and editing documents. And you can see it or you can just copy it and go back to your bubble app and paste it in. And again, you want bear before with a capital B space and then the API key private is in the API key. So don't get confused there. And then you can initialize the call and oh, can only fields can only contain lowercase letters. All right, let's fix that. All right, let's get this to work. And there you go. Then you get back the ID of the document or record you created in Elasticsearch and you can save this into your bubble database, right? So if you want to edit the document, you can use the Elasticsearch ID. All right, awesome. So that's for creating documents. Again, you're gonna to wanna to create a single document for every record you want in your search engine. And you probably will wanna save the bubble ID. So what I would save here is a bubble ID. And one thing about this is it's a flexible structure. So you don't have to define it before, you just send in whatever you want as needed and it will automatically add the fields that you add. And so you wanna send the bubble ID, whatever it is, with every document you send so that you have a link between the index on Elasticsearch and what you're using on Bubble. And that is just how you create documents. So just create, run a loop or a backend workflow to create all the documents in your Elasticsearch engine. And then the next thing is the actual query call. So the query call is also pretty simple. You go to engines and overview, and then you can click and see click here to see the API reference and go to query syntax. And over here, you'll see just like this URL you need to use for querying. So let's copy this and then fill in what we need here. We, let's copy the CURL, paste it into bubble. Let's import another call from CURL, paste it in, and we can just add the query over here. It'll automatically add the body you need. And so you just want to add the query in here. So in our case, what did we upload to, let's call this search. And over here we have the record we added, which is lawyer. Okay, so let's just put in a query of lawyer. And if we initialize this call, oh, invalid credentials. All right, we gotta add that API key. So go back to credentials. And over here we have the search key. This is different than the read write. So when you're creating documents, you want a different key than when you're actually searching. So you just grab this key and the search key and go back here and instead of after the bear, you just paste in that key. And remember, it starts with search. So that's part of the API key. So go back to the create documents endpoint, copy the entire endpoint, and then go to the search endpoint. And you can see that the only difference is at the end, it just says search. So just paste it in. And instead of documents, just type in search. And then you can initialize it and it will work. And if we go to the actual results in this JSON, we can see that we get the ID, which is like profession, lawyer, name, and there's one result over here. And this is what we actually sent to Elasticsearch. Again, to actually have full search engine, you have to send hundreds or thousands of records that you'll then query. But the thing is that when you're actually wanna connect it to Bubble, you may say, oh, okay, that's great. I'm searching an external database, but I need to connect it to my Bubble app. What you wanna do is since you're saving the bubble ID over here in Elasticsearch, when someone clicks on a search result, you can find that record in your bubble database, if that makes sense. So if you're saving users, you can do a search for user where bubble ID equals the query results or whatever the records bubble ID. And in the next video, if people want, I can make a video on that, but I just wanted to go over the basics of search Elastic and just like how it works. Again, this does cost money. There's like a 30 day free trial, but yeah, I highly recommend it if you're running a serious scale startup or you actually need good search for your app to work well. Another quick thing I'll go over is some of the features here. So if you go to engines and back to the engine you created, there's relevance tuning, which means this is how much of precision you want with your search. Bubble is like at the max, it has to be exactly but usually you want like less precision, right? So if somebody puts in the wrong query, they should still get the correct results. And you can also tune it based on how much you wanna weigh on each field that you added. So if you wanna add more weight to the name or more weight to the profession, that's like also good. The other thing is you can add synonyms. So when it's searching, you can like literally add 
synonyms as is. If like name will also be like, I don't know. I don't know what a synonym for name is, but like identity, I don't know. Then you can add synonyms here and curations. You can also manually set specific search results based on a query. So for example, if I search, okay, minority owned businesses and I'm querying businesses, I can add in specific results. And just like a lot of fun stuff you can do. There's also analytics on what queries are happening. I think we only had one query, so it's not adding it. But if I go to my other example over here, I have a thousand records and I did a bunch of queries and you can see how many results come in for each query. And there's lots of fun analytics stuff you can do because this software is actually built just for search. So if you like this video, subscribe to this channel and let me know if you want any further videos on Elasticsearch. Also, if you want access to my bubble editor, it will be the bubble editor will include also the example I used where I have the records and the one we created together. Link in the description. You can buy access for that. Thank you for watching.